and it's inevitable that popular playwrights have some works that are termed their minor plays. But those so-called minor plays can still provide some pretty good theater. And entertainer critic Robert Osborne is here with an example, Robert. Yes, pretty good indeed, Liz. The late Tennessee Williams didn't earn his mantle as one of the three greatest American playwrights without reason. Many reasons, in fact, including The Glass Menagerie, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, Sweet Bird of Youth, Rose Tattoo, Summer in Smoke, Streetcar Named Desire. Quite a list. Great plays with great roles for actors. But even the best playwrights should be allowed a clinker or two. Tennessee Williams had his off nights, God knows. But the remarkable thing about Williams is that even his worst plays provide monumental roles for actors. And a case in point is a production of Blue Carré at the Beverly Hills Playhouse. May I inquire what this battle is about? View Carré all takes place in a dilapidated, broken-down rooming house in the French Quarter of New Orleans in the 1930s. It's a house filled with every kind of tortured personality and off-kilter emotion Tennessee Williams has ever written about in the past. So much so that View Carré often resembles a virtual that's entertainment of the playwright's past in the theater. Maybe even unintentionally a Saturday Night Live sketch on Williams. The play is one of the last written by him. It made a brief appearance on Broadway in 1977, but has never had a successful mounting, not until the current one at the Beverly Hills Playhouse, where it's now completing its fifth month. And if it is a success here, it's almost exclusively due to the superb direction by Clive Ventura and its sensational playing by a cast of pros. For example, there's Ray Strickland as a tubercular painter, a painter who's become a quick sketch artist and has his homosexual sight set on Robert Whiteman. Whiteman is a new boarder in the rooming house and a very unworldly writer who obviously has ties to the real Tennessee Williams as a young man. Both give touching, heartbreaking performances. I have a fever you'd be lucky to catch. A fever to hold and be held. Damn right this pain, now get out! Michael Savage also shows great power and great potential as a rough-edged loser who lives with McKee Anderson in the flea bag. Savage, I think it'd be a cinch for a TV series or a big film feature. And Karen Condanzian is the most glowing example of a Tennessee Williams lady. She's the landlady who oversees the whole nightmarish world of Vue Carre. But then, virtually all the performances are first-rate, and that's why this production glows and shines. I just wanted you to notice his reaction. He was just embarrassed. A lot to learn about life in the quarter, Jane. I think he's a serious person that I could talk to, and I need somebody to talk to. You can't talk to me, huh? Are you working all night in a Bourbon Street strip joint? Sleeping nearly all day? Involving yourself with the underworld elements of this corrupt... Is that all I do, babe, huh? I oh, did. How'd you get yourself mixed up with me, huh? Hmm? Uh, how could I say that so that you would understand? <laughs> Just say, babe. I didn't know you were behind me until you put your, your hand on my hip and I turned. I started to say, stop that. But I didn't. Because you were something that I've never encountered before. Fake the innocent boy's eyes, smiling. And I said to myself, why not with nothing to lose? Oh, yes, you pleasure me, Ty. I've been alone so long. Silk on silk is lovely, regardless of the danger. You want to hit bed? How long I've been asleep? 
crying about? I just give you one hell of a Sunday afternoon ball and crying about it like your mother died. You forced me, you little pig. You did. You, you me, forced baby. me. You wanted, you I you didn't. Baby. I didn't. But I am a lady. Wars I'm paid. not a whore. Wars get paid for it, babe, but never had to. You little prick. Come on. No, you Come prick. On, baby. Is that the way she talks to you? Come Smearing you with lipstick, which I know that she does repeatedly between shows when you ball her. Who are you talking I'm about? I'm talking about the headliner at the strip show, the champagne girl. the show, though. Oh, the headliner quit the show. Yeah, honey, the champagne girl's dead, so she's not in the show. She's not such a hot attraction anymore. Don't be funny about it. It ain't funny. What do you mean? She's actually yes, dead. Yeah, she's actually dead. Real dead. About as dead as dead. Which is totally dead. Now you know why I needed a needle to get me through last night. It was jealous of her. I never touched the champagne girl. She was strictly the property of the man. Nobody dared to touch her. The man? What man? The man. What the name known by. Well, he wasted her. You mean he killed her? Why? Because she quit sleeping with him, that's why. See, the champagne girl was offered a deal on the West Coast. Man said no. Champagne girl said yeah. So, man. You don't say no to the man. So, if she's going to the West Coast, it's going to be packed in ice. See, when the man gets annoyed at something, he piles his loopos in the back seat of his bulletproof limo and lets him loose on the source of his annoyance. What are loopos? Loopos. And them big black dogs are used for a tackle. The man's got three of them. When he patrols his territory at night, they sit up there in the back seat of his link and they sit up there with their mouths wide open and their dagger teeth and their black eyes rolling around like dice and a nigga crap shoot his hands in the night before last Jesus. Let them in champagne girls pump. And they. Oh, well, I ate them. They know the tits off the ribs. They know the sweet little ass off. The cost of the story is a champagne girl entertained a pervert who killed her and ate her like that. But it's pretty well known it was some lupos that devoured that girl under them sealed mirrors and crystal chandeliers. Her all white satin bedroom. Yeah, honey, gone. Headliner. You gotta say it when man wastes somebody. You gotta say that he or she is going to spend. But he told me last night. People ask you, where's the champagne? I tell them. Shutter. Where are you going? You going out naked? I'm gonna vomit and I'm gonna die in clean air. Ben. Out! Come on. Out! Come on, Ben. You ben. Out! Shh. Out! Shh. Come on. Shut. Shh. Close the shutter. Okay. Right, shut and both this. Store. Why do you bring those nightmare stories home to me? Brought the subject up, babe. You asked me about the champagne girl. I wasn't planning on telling you about it. Do you want some weed? Coffee. It's cold. Cold coffee. All right. Now, for once, you've got to be mature and understanding and get dressed. The Brazilian is past due. I realized your defects, but but you touched me like nobody had ever touched me before in my life or ever could again. And I realized that you were violent, but I thought that, that you had been caught in the violence and that you were gentle, that you could escape. I thought that you'd grow up. You refused to. Babe, I took you for honest. I took you for decent. Decent! De you were... Oh, I'm sorry. 
to abuse each other. When we entered into this, it was with with no long-term thing in mind. Now please, let me see her in the door. Just go into the bathroom. Go into the bathroom. Quiet. You go in the bathroom. You go in the bathroom. Quiet. Get in there. There's no Brazilian, babe. There's no buyer. No. No sale. Just a yellow cab girl with limousine aspirations. Cut the smart talk, babe. Please, let's level. Well, after all, why not? If you're interested. Sorry, I'm gonna have to cut. It. You're gonna it's have fine. to end. Whatever we got, we got. You guys are wonderful. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you all very much. I'll clean up this mess. <laughs>